ಗೋಪಿ ಚನ್ನ ವಲ್ಲಪ ಇರ್ವರ ಗೋಪಿ ಚನ್ನ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಬಿರಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನೇತ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ Sorry, I'm going to have to take this garland off. So even though it's kind of light, it's actually, I am very sensitive with the neck here. Oh. And I've had serious shoulder problems with things hanging, causing me to 
bend down like this. Sorry, I just have to put it somewhere. You want me to put it? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Let's see. Okay. You can put it on the camera. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, text number nine from the passing away of Bhishma. That's uh, Canto one, chapter nine. Tan Samitan Mahabhagan. Upalabya Vasuttamaha Pujayam Asa Dharmagyo Deshakala Vibhagavit. Okay, so we'll go through the translation. Bhishma Dev, who was the best among the eight Vasus, received and welcomed all the great and powerful Rishis who were assembled there, for he knew perfectly all the religious principles according to time and place. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Expert religionists know perfectly well how to adjust religious principles in terms of time, time and place. place. All the great acharyas are religious preachers or reformers of the world executed their mission by adjustment of religious principles in terms of time and place. This is a fantastic purport, very relevant. There are different climates, how oh, you betcha, and situations in different parts of the world. And if one has to discharge his duties to preach the message of the Lord, he must be expert in adjusting things in terms of time and Please. place. Bhishma Dev was one of the 12 great authorities in preaching this cult of devotional service. And there, oh. for he could receive and welcome all the powerful king, yogi, no. yogi, rishi. Rhymes with pages. Sages. Sages, sages. yes. <laughs> powerful sages. Okay. Assembled there at his deathbed from all parts of the universe. He was certainly unable at that time. time to welcome and receive them physically because he was neither at his home nor in a normal healthy condition. But he was quite... Tight. Tight. And gross. Gross. Love? No. Rhymes with sit. Go through A, B, C, D. <laughs> <laughs> but he was quite fit, fit. Oh. by the activities of his sound mind. <laughs> and therefore he could utter sweet words with hearty expressions. And all of them were well received. One can perform one's duty by physical work, by mind, and by speech. Word. Words. Words. Yeah, I was going to say rhymes with birds. <laughs> and he knew well how to utilize them in the proper place. And therefore, there was no difficulty for him to receive them, although physically unfit. So the theme word here is adjustment. Adjust. On the, the, uh, when I was doing my first walk across Canada, I stopped and I spent uh, a night in Medicine Hat with a Sharma family, an older couple. And we had a discussion with Mrs. Sharma in particular, and um, you know, the conclusion was from her side, the beautiful thing about Hinduism is that you can adjust. You can adjust, you can add on. It's not, you know, like black and white vision. You know, there's room for accommodation. 
<laughs> the whole culture of India is basically like that. Oh, you're Catholic? You have a problem back home? Oh, sure, come on in. You're a bunch of Jewish people? You have some problems at home? Come on in. No. Like that. It's been like that for India, pretty much. You know, people coming in, are like re genuine refugees coming in. Yeah, body ball, come on over. So that adjustment principle is something that Srila Prabhupada also applied. He came to the West. What happened was, it was a different kind of people. Young people, people who didn't know anything about this culture. He adjusted himself. Um, Women could go on the altar. They could get second initiation. Not, nobody ever did that before. Cutting edge guru, Prabhupada was. So he was. He saw this is the way they do it here, and this is I will make adjustments. There's certain, you know, let's say, principles or core values that he didn't want to tamper with. Like in other words, Krishna will always be God. <laughs> But how you present Krishna is a different way. I personally have difficulties with devotees who are born, or let's say, join people who join in the early 70s. They say, everything was thriving at that time. We have to do it this way. You know, everything according to 1972, when I joined. You know, I joined then, and so everything should be done according to the way it was then. But all I can say is the world has changed. You have to adjust. Prabhupada was a letter-writing person. His disciples were not. They were telephone people. Right? Now you don't use telephones. You have something else. You, know, you have computers. And this is a small computer. Telephone is incorporated in it. Everything is here. And you don't handwrite anymore. It's, you know, everything's typed. So, you know, you would, we adjust, but the core values have to stay in place. Now, the example is given here. Bhishma Dev is lying on his deathbed. And people are coming from all over the world. You can imagine. You know, we were talking the other day about, you know, the Gujaratis, have a, they have a certain cuisine. You know, sugar has to go in everything. God forbid, you know. <laughs> and uh, Punjabis have a certain, you know, the northern cuisine is different. And there's no sugar, right? But lots of dairy. Paneer has to be in everything, you know or dahi, or some kind of milk product has to be made. And when you go to the south, it is, you know, idli sambar, and, uh, you know, what do you call those big doshas, and, you know, I personally have a hard time adjusting to them. But anyways, what about people who cook Chinese? What about people who cook Italian? You know? Prabhupada was willing to adjust uh, and say that all of these things are okay. Even for your own well-being, it's good to use the foods from your local area instead of from some alien area district. Mm -hmm. They say, work locally, think locally. I also have a firm belief about that, about gurus. People should just kind of be initiated, just initiated do everything kind of in a way locally, you know? Mm -hmm. And then all uh, interests stay in the local area, even funds. <laughs> they stay in your locality, um, you know, and then people have access to their guru or gurus, plural, shiksha and diksha. So I, I, you know, that kind of adjustment we haven't made yet. We've made some kind of superstar heroes and charismatic people, and, and uh, there's many other people who are qualified to be gurus, but they feel shy. Oh, I can't, I can't be charismatic, so, you know, we, we lose out because we think you have to have superstars. You know? mm -hmm. But if we can do everything more locally, that would be really nice. You know? the, lo the local people inspire you. you know? There's motivational people everywhere. You know? But, you know, we'll, this God will adjust. Adjustment is the, is the theme, again. Uh, being able to adjust and uh, just like say, I remember one of our prime ministers Trudeau, you know, during the time of a recession, he said, okay, you've got your belt, okay? And now we're on an austerity program. There isn't the same kind of money around. So you take your belt and you just kind of like, now your, your waistline is getting reduced. So now you just take that belt and you put the, uh, you know, you open it up so that you've got extra holes now, you know? 
you're gonna and you put your little fastener in there and you stick your belt in there and like that so it's when the money is a little more flourished then you get you know, you get a little fatter you know mm -hmm. so you adjust adjust your weight and it's always good to be tight so Bhishma Dave was lying on his bed of arrows and people came from all over the world it was a multicultural program that's what it was it was pluralist, a pluralistic spectators event. They came from all over, not just India, all over, we are to understand. And they came to hear what he had to say. He spoke about Raja Dharma. He spoke about, you know, ultimately, you know, Bhakti. And because he's one of the great teachers in the science, one of the 12 Mahajans, Bhishma Dev was. So, and his message is universal. It's not just for one group of people. It's good for all. Krishna talks about like confidential knowledge, chapter nine, text two. It's confidential. It's for everybody, everybody, not just for brown people, and not just for you know uh, the first people. They always say you know everything started from Africa. They can you can't really prove that. Um, you know uh, the Caucasians. It's uh, for the Chinese. It's for everybody. And what's the message? You're not that body. You're a spirit. And what to do about that? You do some seva, service. It's universal. The message is universal. Unfortunately, people get caught up in their gender and also their place where they were born. And you know, at the same time, while we have a geographical identification, uh, that has to be respected. I also have personal issues with chaturmasya. So it doesn't mean anything to me in Canada. Okay. Like, uh, it's to very irrelevant, the month that you don't eat any gra uh, leafy greens, you know. That's when it grows here. Okay, mm -hmm. what? And you're supposed to take local <laughs> things for the deities. So how can you deny that, okay? Or we serve the deities and then you let the prasadam rot because we can't eat green leafy vegetables at this time. And it's not just spinach, it's, you know, lettuce and all these other things too. So it doesn't make sense to us here. And one of the, in one of the uh, uh, months, we uh, fast from yogurt. And, well, it's hot, so aren't you supposed to take yogurt to cool you down? And then milk the next month or something. And then Uradol. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't want it. Uradol smells like fish to me, you know. I, I don't need it anyways, you know. But so it's very relevant to a geographical place, like maybe Bengal, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so now I think this why we helped to establish these things. The principle is good, you know. Four months, like this is four months for us, like starts in December, January, February, March, maybe. Four months of the snowy season and ice season. They say rain, but we say ice. And yeah, everybody's... But their budget is tight in those months. It's true, isn't it? Everybody's holding back. Oh, it's cold. You know, the heat costs like anything, you know, just to get the gas going. And so, you again, you just adjust your bill. You know, it's okay. It's cool. Austerity program is good for you. It's all right. They say that you build character, you know, when you're, you're in the cold. You know, you live in a cold climate for part of the year. Gives you character. You, know, you have to put in some good, you know, good uh, credits to to uh, to, uh, to our northern climate. Uh, I like to give the example of um, Vidura. He told his blind brother, "Go to the north. Go to the north. Why the north? Because that's where all the yogis go. It's cool. You'll find some kind of cool cave, mm -hmm. and the climate is cool too." Cool, having a cool head is better for meditating than when it's hot. When it's hot, you're, can you feel your brain boiling a little bit? It's good to have a cool head. And everybody knows the story. Prabhupada was in the UK. And a journalist came, and it was the 60s, and you know, late 60s or early 70s. Women had a habit to have you know, short skirts. And Prabhupada just thought, was a little bit amused by this. She asked a lot of questions you know, about Krishna consciousness. Then she asked the question, well, why do you shave your head? And Prabhupada said, it is better to have a cool head than to have cool legs. 
<laughs> With a cool head, everything can go on. So a good plug-in for northern yeah, no, climatic atmospheres, right? At least it's clean. It, the, the cold sterilizes everything. At least it keeps the mosquitoes at bay. Thanks, God. Yes. So uh, well, that is you're talking about fit. You know, the good fit for for the world is you know what uh, an a good acharya, a very perceptive teacher understands. Okay, people do things a little differently here, so I will adjust, but the core values will remain. When I was remember we were in Fiji. What do they call those skirts that the guys wear? Uh, Sulu. Sulu. Yeah, love. Sulu. Yeah. yeah. And they were pretty, you know, heavy, so that if the wind came, it didn't yeah. blow them up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I re remember meeting the Mormons. You know. Yeah. They were there. They were with their white shirts, and they had those so, yeah. sunos, right? Yeah. They were wearing them. Because they were, you know, adjust, you know, it, it looked smart. And this is uh, what people are accustomed to. And that kind of replaced the grass skirts that everybody was wearing. Mm -hmm. The men and the women, the grass skirts. So, you know, adjustment. They're smart, thinking smart. Making an, an adjustment, you know, to, in order to reach out to people. Also language, you know, change the language. Learn the language so people will understand. When the French first came to Canada, they learned the like local language of the people. And then they said, ha, 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 we like these guys. You know, they, they, they value our language. They respect it. Of course, much later on, with different installments of Europeans coming in, says, your language is no good. It is barbaric. It is low class. You know, Learn English, and that's it. Did that win the hearts of the people? No. No. Because you didn't make an adjustment. I remember when I was young and uh, we were learning about how the uh, native people, got, some got converted to Christianity. They had this idea of the nativity scene. It's Christmas now, so we can talk about this. The nativity scene is where baby Jesus is in the manger, in a crib. And his mother and father are there, and the three kings of Orient came. There's cows all around, so I'm like that, like a Krishna type thing. And um, but when this nativity was taught to the local people by the Jesuits, priests from France, um, they adjusted it a little bit, the language, papus. They made baby Jesus look a little bit like like they, their people. You know? You know, uh, having that sort of uh, th their own version of their their crib, so the language they adjusted and so on, but they kept the Jesus factor in, in there. So they adjusted and they were smart about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, before Christianity established itself all over Europe, uh, the people were honoring the win winter solstice. So since that's the longest. Uh, night of the year, shortest day. This was a big event for people. Winter solstice. Now it will turn, uh, turn in favor of you know, the sun being more, uh, like opening up slowly. Like we have short days now. Yeah. Now the days will lengthen after the 25th in that area. So Jesus was not born on the 25th of December. He was born in the spring. But to convert the local pagans, they decided, let's take. Christmas and slap it on to the festival that they honor. So, so they adjusted. Whether good or bad, that's not the issue. They adjusted. They were thinking how to market their, their product. And their product was Jesus. At the same thing, we are Krishnaites. You know, we follow Krishna. And we have to think how to market. Everybody markets how to market Krishna effectively so people will come. I would say that if we keep everything strictly Hindu-like, it will only attract one kind of people. If we adjust it a little bit, you know, to make people feel a little more comfortable, oh yeah, there's a little bit of a early Canadian feel here, but if it's all a little bit cluttered and so many images and, you know, kind of like a very Indian kind of profile, 
then they'll say, oh, this is for Indian people. I, I won't get involved. We are, we are not adjusting ourselves to, to take care of the local people. When uh, the devotees purchased this building in uh, Los Angeles, it was a church before. Now, when the devotees purchased it, they took out all the pews and all the benches. And Prabhupada was a little surprised. Uh, why is this? He actually wanted everything to stay because that's what people are a little accustomed to, sitting down and hearing someone in the front. Of course, we, now we have no real regrets. I think the hippies liked it better that way and he was the open concept. But Prabhupada had an idea, you know, uh, keep things as they are, just insert Krishna. And it's not that he wasn't willing to adjust. We've seen so many instances where he was looking at Desha Kala Patra, time, place, circumstance. Yeah. And making an adjustment based on how people are and how they think. And, and the con climate, I have, I've had to think a little seriously about, okay, we wear dhotis, you know, and sorry. Does it work in this climate? Inside, it's fantastic. Does it work outside when uh, you're outside? <laughs> Does it work when you're trying to fix the, something in the ceiling? Let's say at is trying to fix the decorations, and you know, uh, there's a, he puts a ladder out there, and his uh, the pleat on his dhoti gets stuck, and oh, <laughs> you know, maybe pants are a better idea. So you adjust. I don't think Chatriyas wore dhotis as we know it now. Because how would it work, you know? They got their sword and then the dhoti flies in the air. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to adjust it. The first time I did a walk across Canada, I said, you know, the dhoti isn't working, you know, because here I am in the open air and the dhoti's flying open. <laughs> I feel like I'm the flying, instead of the flying nun, I'm the flying monk. <laughs> So then I, I tried different things like safety pin it, and then the wind is so strong it, it just rips, you know. I tried so many different things. Now I just get someone to sew it. You see this, like this? No more problems. I just did. I didn't feel I had to do it exactly the way they do it in India for so many years. And look at this. Sadhus traditionally never had sewn clothing. This is a Muslim kind of thing. But we adjusted. Because of, well, the climate, the cold, and so on like that. In Ontario, they have a law that women can also be bare-chested. But fortunately, the weather is such that maybe you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they were saying it's kind of like a feminist thing. Well, men can do it. Why can't women do it? Well, you know, the construct is a little different. You know what I mean? You know. <laughs> So somehow or other, the government made an adjustment. Okay, all right, all right. They put their hands up and they, all right. And, uh, you know, but women have adjusted and say, well, I'm not going to go out there and, you know, expose myself. You know, people will take advantage of me. Yeah, so we be ready to adjust, keep the core values. Then we'll be successful in sharing and spreading our Krishna God. If we want to implement Varna and Ashram, it means that we spread a wide cloth, you know? We take something like this. And right now, here, right now, here's what we are. We are a little Hare Krishna temple. Very nice. I come every week, okay? But if you take Krishna consciousness and you take this cloth and you sweep it out, spread it out, to Krishna consciousness is this. Everybody feels, okay, really? I, I'm also a devotee. But I smoke cigarettes. Yeah, you're still a devotee. You just keep working on your cigarettes, okay? Uh, I take alcohol. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a drunk half the time. That's okay. Work on it. You know? I hunt moose. Oh, that's okay. We were hunters in Krishna's time. Um, or let's, say, let's take it another stretch. But I'm a prostitute. You can still be Krishna conscious. You can still like Krishna. You know, a prostitute, like say a female prostitute can say, oh, that Krishna, he's a beautiful hunk. <laughs> you know, he's a gorgeous creature. But they can love Krishna in a certain kind of way. And uh, then when we're inclusive, 
then everyone fits and Varnashram then works. But if it says, you have to do like this, as we put everything things in a little box, and then you crumple it up, and you stamp on it, you know, crush it. Uh, I don't think that works for people. I think there has to be more openness. Spread it out wide. Spread and open, the doors have to be wide open, and then people will come. But if we give it a little hole to come in, then it says, well, I'm not even gonna bother trying, forget it. I'll go to another faith. I'll go to another community. But if we make, make it kind of open and wide and loving like this, come. Then what happens as they come? You know what happens? Come, come back home like this. Right? But if we, if it's like this, four principles, 16 rounds, no meat, fish eggs, you're a demon if you do. Uh, you're a drunkard, you don't belong here. You know, I mean, it's, it doesn't work. We want to see that everybody is a devotee, everybody's God conscious, they all, everybody has a good heart, and, um, and then just help them, encourage them as they go along. That's a better approach. The inclusiveness is what's important. And to do that, you have to adjust. Prabhupada did, after all, say, Varnashram is everywhere. Everywhere you find Brahminical people, Chatriya people, uh, you have Vaishas and you have Shudras. It's there in every culture all over the world. But, you know, sometimes we get a little bit too caught up in, like, churchianity. Like, we've got a church, okay? And these are our rules, and if you don't follow, you don't really belong here. It's not right. It's not what he had in mind. Somebody has suggested, oh, Prabhupada, you know, we are going to, uh, we're going to have some, we're thinking about getting big deities now. And, you know, Prabhupada's response was, what are you going to do for the people? Do big deities matter for a lot of people? I don't think so. But what does matter to people is, you know, being part of a community and so on. I remember one person who was working on the documentary with us, uh, The Longest Road, and he said, uh, Swami, you know, I'm looking, I'm lonely. I'm looking for a community to belong to. I'm lonely. And I want to have some people in my life I can identify with. So for that, we, we have to have different scenarios, I think, for people coming from different backgrounds. Well, yesterday we were with a yoga community and they, we had, it was very nice, but it was a different kind of setting and, a, you know, than this. And they would probably appreciate, you know, there were some nice noodles and, and stir fry that was there and they liked that very much. But they might not like our salt and sugar and our heavy-duty spices with oils. I know it's Alberta, but it doesn't mean you have to put oil in everything, <laughs> right? So adjust, adjust, adjust. It's just to adjust. So um, nice example, it's a purport I should not forget to remember. One. Nine. 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 Thank you. Any questions? I wonder if we have Prashad. I think that's the question because we have to go there. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna. And we'll take this garland and we'll throw it, throw it in the air and whoever gets it, I guess. <laughs> gets us wishes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, our Pujari ji got it. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.